Hi, creepy. I am Reanimate Her. I know, it just sounds like a porno all of a sudden. Some zombies start stripping their clothes off and shit. Cat dead. Details later. We got our ball cleavage back, ladies. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming for you, Barbara. Do you want a game and get your jollies off as well? This is Coffee Tat of Horrors. Uh, let's see. For the Lost Boys, who here has seen Lost Boys? Uh, the Lost Boys came out in 1987. In 1987. Um, this is a really great film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't. I can't die in my dreams. I've. I'm always invulnerable to death. Interesting, Fenris. Our minds are crazy. Mister Cootie, how are you? How is your mom? I've been super close to tornadoes. It's insane. Be safe, maniac. Seriously, be safe. I've seen the original Lost Boys, but not the sequels. The sequels are not directly direct sequels of this film. Mm-hmm. Definitely, Fenris. Definitely. Definitely. Um. Okay. So. The plot of Lost Boys, for those of you that haven't seen it, after moving to a new town, two brothers discover that the area is a haven for vampires. We are going to watch the trailer before I give you more information about this film. Uh, released within months of release of Labyrinth. Mm, yes, Labyrinth is another good uh, is another good film. I am going to ah uh, Carnival. I got some really good facts on those maggots. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, me and my husband are get our storm. Oh, your storm tracers. Chasers. Nice music. Nice. Uh, she's okay. I did a lovely roast dinner. Oh, Mr. Cootie. You're pretty awesome. Dahi. Mwah, thank you for that host. And by the way, today is um, Go Klepto's birthday. So if he stops in, we're going to have to stop what we're doing and collaborate and listen and sing Happy Born Day. Yes, I did. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Uh, I have a reoccurring dream of me standing in a hotel on, that's on fire. The spot I am in is on the eighth floor, burning people, reaching out. I wake up smelling. Oh, my goodness, bearded. Um, I can take a look for you in one of my books. Exactly, Ice. Exactly. How are you doing, Dahi? I have reoccurring dreams, and then there's something similar to the dreams. Nice. Oh, he should be here soon. Perfect. When he comes in here, oh, we're going to go and sing him Happy Born Day. Um... The first thing we're going to do, though, is we are going to go watch this trailer. Please let me know if it's loud enough for you guys, okay? I don't want to blow anybody's eardrums out. It is a amazing vampire film. Uh, such a great film. If you have yet to see it, I highly recommend you jumping on, putting this on your list for, like, number one or number two to watch uh, this weekend or even next week. It's definitely a great film, and you won't be disappointed in it. Seriously, you won't be disappointed. You think you watched this with bike? Nice, Petra. Nice. Yeah, game, right? Mm-hmm. The of course those hairstyles—they're pretty epic. Uh, it's definitely a great film. Uh, Schumacher did a really good job on this film. Uh, opening night. So, in 1987, when this was released, the opening night was uh five million two hundred and thirty-six dollars right that's a lot of money worldwide this motherfucker gained over 32 million worldwide on that weekend 32 million dollars uh nuclear vamp how are you good good day beautiful how's your day going you live in tornado alley oh my god beard you need you need to be safe out there yeah right yeah over 32 million dollars worldwide yeah in 1987 that's big money guys you got to remember about the time of that of 87 that was huge fucking money Crowley how are you doing today my friend Schmokin how are you I seen you come in right when I was playing the um the thing over how are you doing today oh uh, Schmokin add it to your list add it to your list if you like vampires uh this is a really great film Mm-hmm. The oh yes, yes, Fenris. That is a bank breaker. Uh tip top VHS. I love VHS. Mm. But I'm too dumb to be safe. You're not too dumb. You just probably like living on the edge. 
Uh, for horror, it's a lot of cash. Yes, it is tangled. For horror, it is a lot of cash. Um, now, this... For those of you who have seen this movie, this film was shot in three weeks. That's it. Three weeks. You know how most films take a half a year to a year to film? Three friggin' weeks to do this film. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, I just found my DVD copy. Nice game. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I've tried to get smoking smoking to watch this movie so many times. Really rotten. Definitely watch it. It is on your list. How are you doing today, Pelly? Yeah, that is quick, right, Doggy? Three weeks. Um, how is your favorite character in The Lost Boys? Who is my favorite character in The Lost Boys? David. I love David. Who doesn't love David? Um, it is definitely a must watch. I, I completely agree with you. Even if you're not a horror fan, uh, Lost Boys is definitely a great film. It is very short. I know, Sailor, can we share? Can we share? Three weeks means a director that knows what they want and knows how to get their actors to do it. You are correct, Neth. Uh, th uh, three weeks. Free That's how long it took. <gasps> One moment, the birthday guy has arrived. You're a bit tired? Well, oh, some coffee might help. Hellraiser? I love Hellraiser, Bearded. Um, <clears throat> hold up. We got to switch our scenes. The birthday guy is here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you broke your chat? Well, Riggs, it doesn't surprise me you broke your own chat, woman. Mm-mm. Never surprises me. You are quite welcome, Bill Klepto. I hope you have a fucking kick-ass day. Uh, oh. Why you in Redneck 89? Thank you for sacrificing your soul for too much to the war. Thank you, thank you. Mwah. I am doing fabulous, my friend. Streams have been great. Thank you for asking. How have you been? Ah, uh, that is right. That blueberry pie had a wicked smile on it before we cut into it. Definitely did, Dahi. And that looked fucking amazing. I wanted to lick my screen. I did. Yes. If you don't believe me, guys, go into my Discord. There are pictures of the pies that Go Klepto got to have for his birthday that uh, he picked up. They look fucking amazing. Faceless. Mwah. Thank you for that host, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Thank you guys so much for With all the birthday love for Go Klepto. Oh, goodness gracious. Music lover, thank you for those tiggle biddies. I do appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. I don't know why Elvira is not popping up on this scene. Um, but we are talking about the Lost Boys uh, from 1987. Uh, did you guys know uh, that the town of Santa Carla does not actually exist? The name of the town is Santa Cruz, California. The production team were only granted permission to shoot there if they agreed to change the name of the town. Yes. Uh, Santa Cruz did not want their name in the film. Yeah. You want to know why? They've had enough, um, enough media coverage because back in the 1970s, there were two serial killers that ran a killing spree in Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm, that it did. Everyone, I need to try Go Klepto's muffins. I've seen his fucking muffins. I've seen them. They look delicious. They always make you want to lick the screen. Oh, I bet you do. Pizza, pie, and booze. Sounds like my kind of day. You been to Santa Cruz, Gamer Sass? I've never been there. I love that fang pic of him. Yes, these imagery that you see here, these infographics, are created by Mr. A Reaper 1923. He is my partner in crime when it comes to coffee chat of horrors. Uh, did you know that California is going to be gone? That is what I keep hearing, holy o. Yeah, there is a murder, the murder capital of the world. Well, listen to this. For that saying, it actually is the truth. The uh, commerce of Santa Cruz, Chamber Commerce, did not want it in the film. Uh, good morning, Iconic. How are you? Yes, Right Ice? It's a great movie, though. Definitely a great movie. Because of where it is and where it lies on the San Andreas fault line, a really good earthquake could just take it out. 
Um, oh my God, guys, we're at 25% of our cosplay. Holy shit, 25% of our cosplay community goal. Pelly, thank you for those skulls. Uh, serial killer, pick me up on your way because I want to crash this party as well. Thank you, Carnival, for donating the skulls of your enemies to our community goal. Um, yes, the Santa Cruz Chamber of Commerce was not keen on reliving the murder capital, um, which had been hung on the Santa Cruz during a serial killer's rampage in the 1970s. There was a murdering spree by two serial killers in Santa Cruz. And um, on the sign that you see in Santa Carla is there as well. And they wanted the name changed because they didn't want to rehash and relive the horrific tales of what happened in 1970s. Mm -hmm. I love Archer. I love the danger zone. All shit, needles and earthquakes. See ya, hippies. <laughs> well, I hope it doesn't because uh, I have friends over in California uh, yep. Pick me up. Pick us up. Uh, my rampage wasn't that bad. Uh, Echo and the bunny man. People are strange in the opening scene. Yes. And do you know that people are strange was technically written by the doors. Uh, I just woke up. So my brain is like an old gateway still loading. It's all right. Let it load my friend. No, they aren't actually uh, cannibal. How are you doing today? These teeth are by um, scarecrow. Uh, Jay Mullen, how are you doing? How are you? For those of you that are just joining my stream, I am Reanimate Her. I am a horror content creator on this platform. I enjoy all things horror, and today is Coffee Chat of Horrors. It is where I go in-depth on horror movies, and today's topic is The Lost Boys. These are scarecrow things in small. Yeah. I have, I've had these for a few years. Mm -hmm. I also have a podcast called Coffee Chat of Horrors where we also take everything that we do here and more and add it to the podcast. Um, now, for you guys that haven't seen this film, I do apologize because I am going to give you spoilers. I am. I can't help it. There's going to be spoilers. So if you um, haven't seen it, I apologize. It has been out since 1987, though. Uh, both the bandstand that is playing on the first time Michael C. Star and the Frog, Bo Frog Brothers at the comic book shop were both destroyed in the 1989 Loma Prita earthquake. Mm -hmm. Talking about earthquakes and stuff like that? Yep. That would be cool, Fenris. That would definitely be, be cool. The Saxman? Do you know that the Saxman was an actual businessman as well? Um, oh my god. Sacrificing the soul of my shadow to the Lord. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ah. Dark Psycho, good morning. Ah, thank you for that host, my friend. I hope you're doing good. And thank you for that sacrifice. I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes. So we just learned that in Santa Cruz, uh, California, the name in the film Santa Carla is not real, but the actual city that was used is real, Santa Cruz. And uh, they really did not want to be in the film. They also didn't want to have a murder capital on the sign because it was going to rehash some bad memories and publicity from the 1970s due to two serial killers that were on the loose there. Uh, Jay Mullen, 1994, welcome to the crypt. Thank you for that follow. Thank you, Land. I'm glad you love being here. Kiefer was a badass. Did you know that Kiefer Sutherland had small parts in here? You noticed throughout the whole film, he didn't have too many parts. Uh, I know someone really good at the sax dance. Yeah, his name is uh, that he needs to really get one on his stream. Serial killer. <clears throat> mm, mm, had something in my throat there. <clears throat> Serial killer. Uh, good morning, Psycho. How are you? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. I have some info on the sax player. I do. Uh, we'll get to that. Do you know that the word and name Michael, guess how many times the word Michael was said in the film? It's said quite a bit. Let's see if you guys can guess the number. I like Kiefer. I like Kiefer Sutherland in all his films. He's a great actor, just like his father. 78 every two seconds, 50, 420, very fucking close. 118 times. 
118 times you hear the word Michael, the name Michael, I should say, 118 times. Yes, it has been counted. That is the total number. A couple of places were saying it was 110 and 114, but I found out that the actual number is 118 times. Yeah, 118 times for Michael. Oh, and for those of you wondering about my teeth, they are scarecrow teeth, and I do use Fixident. <laughs> That's what keeps them in. Donald Sutherland and Kiefer Sutherland are great actors. I say it every day. That you do. That you do, Sailor. Hmm. Now, um, did you guys know that the vampires in this film were supposed to be a lot younger than what they actually are? Right? What's his name? Michael. They were supposed to be a lot younger than what they were in this film. And uh, this, this, the title of the film, technically this is supposed to be based off of Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a cool vampire movie, but confusing as hell because I thought the vampires bite people on the neck then turn them into vampires and not feed them blood and however had vampire seizures fly. There's lots of different vampire lore out there, Mama Ducky. Lots of different ones. Pink, how are you doing? Mwah. Thank you for that host. Uh, definitely, yep, Canadian actor as well. Um, there are sequels. There are, uh, they're not direct sequels. Uh, Schumacher never got a chance to make his direct sequel. Uh, so this was supposed to be the darker Pete. Yes, basically, Big Bear Gaming, how are you? How are you doing? Good afternoon to you. Miss Machiavelli, I love your guts. You get that sleep, you crazy lady, for staying up so late. Um, there will be a VOD, an edited VOD on my YouTube channel, as well as I will do a MP3 version of this Coffee Chat of Horrors for the podcast. So for those of you that can't watch video and can only listen, you'll be able to catch this uh, on a podcast. Uh, Vlad, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler. This little guy right here, my little, um, my little bat, he's a little hard to see on this scene. Mm-hmm. His name is Vlad. Uh, who didn't, Pink? Who didn't? Both Corys, man. Um, yep, drinking the blood usually did because of the infection that was inside of it. Twisted Bunny, mwah, thank you for that host. You're off to work. Have a great day, Nith. I love your guts. Thank you so very much for stopping by. You have a great day, my friend. Mm-hmm. I don't like the other lot. No. No, they weren't that great. Uh, I guess Star was evil version of Tinkerbell. Sort of, kind of. And I've got some info on Star as well for you. I want to go to Romania. Me too, Big Bear. There's actually a few castles out there that I want to see um, in different areas. But like I was saying, the vampires were supposed to be a younger version than what you actually see in the film. The title of the film is reference to Peter Pan's Neverland click of eternally young boys. And that influence was reflected in the screenplay. Executive producer Richard Donner brought Joel Schumacher on board to direct, but Schumacher was not into the idea of making Goonies go vampire. So uh, the vampires grew into older model type, including Billy Worth, who was working as a model when he auditioned. Um, there are, they're not direct sequels. No worries, Miss Machiavelli. I love you. So have a good sleep, my, my beautiful friend. Uh, there is, there is. Uh, they're not great films, the sequels. Uh, Blood, Pot, Blood Plus, welcome, how are you? It definitely is a great movie. Oh, what, Peter Pan's favorite fast food restaurant? Wendy's. <laughs> Ross, something I've always wondered. After Michael drinks the blood, they go, in, they go to the train track. When Michael falls, does he die or does he, the fall awaken him as a vampire? Well, you know what? When I was looking through the information on here, it, it, they really don't give us a full info on what actually happens to Michael. But I would say that the fall from the train tracks, you know how they say you die before you hit the floor? I'm thinking that's exactly what happened to Michael, right? So technically died when he fell from the bridge in the air. So they say that you have a heart attack. Usually you have a heart attack when you're falling. So that's what I'm going to go with, I think. 
Uh, I know it is for you, Phase Grinder, because you're in the future as well, my friend. Please get some sleep. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for all of the love. There will be a VOD for this, so you can watch it later. Have a great sleep. Ah, I love your guts, my friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's actually, uh, I think for like $1,400, you can do that, uh, music lover. Uh, another bad joke is, why did Peter Pan know he could beat Captain Hook in poker? Peter knew Captain Hook had lost at least one hand. <laughs> yeah, he did. He definitely did. Uh, it's not the fall that kills you. It's the sudden stop at the end. That too, Raymond. That too. But if you did see this film, you, you do know about the train track scene. Uh, I was trying to find different information on certain things in the film, especially the wine bottle. It was very hard finding information on those things. David Vampire, how are you doing? Cry Little Sister. Mm, that song became famous. Became famous. Uh, all the, so the reason why this soundtrack is so kick-ass is because Sailor Knows. Sa does Sailor know the answer? Because I'd love to know. Um, the soundtrack to this, the reason why it was so awesome, Joel Schumacher went to each of the bands that he thought would bring really good music to this film. And the reason why... Uh, the film became, the music, the soundtrack became so big is because he got some of the best in the industry to do some of the songs. Do you know that Joel Schumacher promised to direct every single music trailer, like video, for the bands that were in this uh, soundtrack? Uh, since COVID doesn't seem to be affecting kids, does that make it a Peter pandemic, right? Uh, Michael didn't drink any human blood yet, so he wasn't really a vampire in his transition. No, technically not, Pink. Technically not. But you know how vampire lore works, right? You love Mar Marilyn Manson's version of Cry Little Sister? It's a good version, uh, David. Definitely a good version. Hmm? Many, ba many bands have taken a sample of that, and I'm going to tell you a couple of them later on in the, uh, the research that I have for you. This is also the first time the two Corys work together on film. Believe it or not, their, their chemistry on set was so great, like they've known each other since birth, but they really haven't. This is the first time that Corey Haim and Corey Feldman met on set. This is their first film that they acted together in and the first time that they have met. Mm -hmm. Even though their chemistry was like off the wall crazy, this also started the teen um, fan phase for the Corys. Hmm? Uh, why did the mother invite a vampire to dinner? Why? Uh, how many films did both Corys star in together? I have no idea, Pelly, but there's a lot. They starred in quite a bit, and this started their career off as a duo. Yeah. Serial killer. I was trying to find information on that wine bottle, and holy shit, I did not get it. I didn't get anything on it. Nothing that I was able to find on my end. Um, there's a few questions I wanted answers to that I couldn't find. Um, but yeah, this started their career. This started both Corey's career in Hollywood, and it started their whole teen thing. Uh, in Max's video store, so you remember the video store in this film. In Max's video store, you can see one single copy of The Goonies from 1985, which also starred Corey Feldman. Uh, you're going to see a lot of throw, a lot of tropes as well in this movie, as well as a lot of nods to previous films and television shows for this movie that are inside this movie as well. Uh, thank you, music lover. I got a lot of facts for you. It's a, it's a, this movie is filled with information, filled with information. Uh, they would let her work on the movie License to Drive. Yep. They worked on a ton of movies after this. This started their career together. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey Feldman, do you know um, what character was inspired by the action for Corey Feldman's character, Edgar Frog? Does anybody know? Uh, Corey Feldman's character was inspired by the action stars of the day, Edgar Frog. Um, so Corey said in an interview, he said, basically, he gave me an order to go out and rent all of the Stallone movies and all the Chuck Norris movies like Rambo, First Blood, Missing in Action. Um, Schumacher said to uh, Feldman, 
uh, that is your character. I want you to meld all of these guys together and make it make something out of it. So that's what I did. That is from an interview with Feldman on his character, uh, Edgar Frog. Mm -hmm. Mouth, he's awesome. Mouth is awesome in uh, The Goonies. It's a great film. Uh, but this is what they didn't want. They didn't want Goonies of the Vampires. And that's why Schumacher changed uh, some of the stuff the original guy wanted on this show, on this movie, I should say. Mm -hmm. But he did. He rented all of the Stallone movies and Norris movies, and he mixed them together, and that is how he had Edgar Frog portrayed. Mm -hmm. Missing in Action is a really good film, yeah. And that is what Schumacher wanted wanted the image of Edward Frog. Edgar Frog, sorry, Edgar Frog. So if you haven't seen this film, now you're going in with a little bit of knowledge. Nice, nice. We're going to pop on to this one here. The bandana around the head. Yep. Also, you can see that in Stallone films, right? Uh, the name Frog Brothers. Who knows who they're named after? Anybody know who the Frog Brothers are named after? Their first names? Edgar Allan Poe. They are named after Edgar Allan Poe. Mm-hmm. Edgar Allan Poe, who is a well-known fiction, horror fiction writer and poet, right? Uh, you got that right. I think there was supposed to be a sequel to Goonies. There was supposed to be a sequel to Goonies, and there was supposed to be a direct sequel to Lost Boys, but there isn't. There are sequels to the film, but not a direct sequel from Schumacher, and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Hi, Joy Toy. You're never late. You're never late, hon. How are you doing today? Poe is one of my favorites too, David. Uh, did you know that Ben Stiller was almost a lost boy? <laughs> ben Stiller was almost a lost boy. Right, Sailor? Right? Right? No. No. Mm-mm. 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 Serious, yeah, serious. Oh, no, no, no. I agree. I love Ben Stiller. He's a great comedian. I like him as an actor. I like, I like a lot of his films. As a vampire, no, no, uh-uh. Um, yeah. I've got a few other stingers for you as well. Uh, the connection between Rob Lowe and the Lost Boys is that Joel Schumacher, who also wrote and directed St. Elmo's Fire, another good film from 1985, uh, is in which a young Lowe played a saxonist. Yes, a saxophonist. Uh, there's also a 16 Candles from 1984 poster in the room, which featured Jamie Gertz, star as Robin. Yeah. So if you're watching this film again, you're going to see a few things that stick out. Rob Lowe, because he's on a poster, and uh, Jamie Kurtz, uh-huh, in 16 Candles and St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, these are not the only little throwbacks and nods to other movies and television shows that is in this film. There's a ton in this film. Uh, yeah, but who thought that Bill from Bill and Ted would be I Love Marcos, right? But he does look like he could be a good cereal, a, a, a good vampire cereal. I have to go shower, be safe, and stay creepy. Love you guys. Music lover, love your guts. You stay creepy as well. Enjoy that shower, and I will slash you later. Sailor Moon, I love St. Elmo's Fire. Like Ben Stein would be a good vampire, right, Roman? Right? Um, it, I feel like Ben Stiller was in it. It, it would be a spoof. Well, yeah, and this is going back to 1987. Do you know that Ben Stiller was a fresh face in 1987? He wasn't a star yet. He wasn't known. Um, he, he would have been a fresh face that nobody really would have known who he was. But we know him now because he has brought on big-time Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Rob Lowe. I think he's great. Yeah, in Sam's room, Plague. Yes, on the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, vampires only, they are, Fenris, they are. Oh, Sailor, I'm sorry you have to go. I love your guts, lady. 
I love your guts. Have a great day. Yeah, no worries. You can watch the VOD and this will also be an uninterrupted podcast as well. I will have it uh, turned into an MP3. I love your guts, sailor. Have a great day and I will slash you later. Uh, thank you, Roman, for that hydrate. <clears throat> I don't know if he could put off, pull off a vampire. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, well, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scully, for tweeting out the stream. I appreciate it. He was Donnie. Jim Carrey was a vampire. Once bitten, baby, 1985. Yep. Once bitten, Jim Carrey was a vampire, 1985. If you haven't seen that film, go watch it. Oh, Donnie, definitely go watch it, hon. Definitely go watch it. Great film. Uh, Once Bitten, 1985. Mm-hmm. It's a great film. Uh, now, on our note with Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey was considered for the role of David. He was considered the role of David because in 1985, he portrayed a vampire in the film Once Bitten. Ha, ha, ha. Um, yep, Laurie Hutton, Lauren Hutton, mm-hmm. I do too, Dark Psycho. It's a great film. I, it's in my collection. Uh, didn't the mom from this movie play the Avon lady? Yes, she did, Mama Ducky. Yes, she did. Edward Scissorhands, great film. I have that on VHS. Thank you, Land. I appreciate it. My vampire teeth are from Scarecrow. They're the small version, and I use Fixident, and I am not sponsored by any of them. I use Fixident for them. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Diana West, that's her name. Uh, Sir Exiled Jack. I didn't get to see the full name, so give me one second here. Sir Exiled Jack the Great, welcome to the crypt. Thank you for that follow. Uh, yes, she's, she's a great actress. A great actress. How you doing today, sir? Welcome to the crypt, and we are talking about The Lost Boys. Um... In this film, you can actually see a poster of Once Bitten. Yeah, behind Max when Lucy first goes to the video store. So when she first goes to the video store, behind Max, so when you watch this again, because I know you're going to watch it again, look behind Max. You're going to see the poster of Once Bitten. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, the song Cry Little Sister was a huge hit. We all know this. It's a great fucking song. Not only did Marilyn Manson use this song, but so did Jim Jones, Eminem, Little B. I don't know who the fuck Little B is, but and Mob Deep. They all use samples of this song. So did Joe Biden. Yeah, believe it. Uh, the sexy sax man that's in this film. Yeah, he's a trained composer. Yeah, the sax man in this film is a trained composer and a multi-instrumentalist. Did you guys know that? His name is Timmy Capello. Did he look like somebody who would be a trained composer and a multi-instrumentalist? No, he does not. Uh, Manson played it live when I saw him. Nice, Tangled. Mm, me too, Joy Toy. A couple of movie poster eggs in The Lost Boy. There definitely is. Oh, my goodness. We are being raided. So we're going to put a timeout right here because we are being raided by Elbon Shadow Steel. Explanation point raid hype to welcome our raiders in. I don't have a raid screen on this on this scene, but welcome raiders. Welcome so very much. Elbon, I am very honored that you would want to bring your yourself and your community over here to the crypt to hang out with the horde on a Sunday. So thank you so very much for stopping on over and giving us some fresh brains to chew on. I know we're kind of getting a little low. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it's the S, ice, S at the end of it. I love your guts. Seriously, Alban. Thank you so very much. How are you doing? How was your stream? Did you have a good stream? What did you play today? Can I get a shout out for Elbon? Dragon's here. fun. How are you doing, darling? Uh, water? Okay, Roman, thank you for the hydrate. It's always S. Always an S. Thank you for that shout out. Elbon Shadow Steel just raided us. 
Elbon is a fantastic content creator here on Twitch. I highly suggest you go check them out and check out their VODs. If you like what you see, hit that follow button. Uh, no worries. Here. Thank you for that raid. You're all right. Looking good today. Thank you, Dragon. I appreciate that. Hello, Seriously Mayhem. How are you feeling? Are you feeling any better? So for those of you just joining us, we are discussing the Lost Boys on Coffee Chat of Horrors. Can I get an exclamation point love in here for Seriously Mayhem? Uh, she has been pretty sick. It sounds like the flu that she has. So if we can give her some love, that would be amazing. I hope you do are I hope you are feeling better seriously. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't believe um game. Have a great day, darling. Thank you for stopping by and hanging with us. I'll slash you later. Uh no, it plays yes, that plays Batman's SFX sound. Yep. So yeah, the sexy uh sax man is a trained composer and a multi-instrumentalist instrumentalist by the name of Timmy Capello. Yeah, believe it or not. Uh, Sir Exile Jack the Great. Mwah, thank you for that host. I appreciate it. Angels with Dirty Faces by Busy Bone also had a sample from Cry... Yep, yep. There were a lot of people, a lot of bands, but these are the ones that came up in my research. Yeah. We got so much info here. It's not even funny. Hopefully, I'll have enough time to tell you guys all of the research. Um, do you know what television show this inspired? Anybody? Such sights Thank you for that shout-out for Seriously Mayhem. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. This movie inspired one of the best vampire television shows of all time. And the movie is, the television show is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer said the idea of them looking like monsters and then looking like people, that was in The Lost Boys, and that was very useful for us. This movie in invented the phrase vamp out, which is used again in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is seriously, it is, it's an awesome film. Not Vampire Diaries, nope. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, was it, yes, he was nuclear. You are right. You know your shit, lady. Uh, yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was heavily influenced by the Lost Boys. Um, and that is because, one, he liked the way that Lost Boys portrayed the vampires. And he loved the term vamp out. Mm-hmm. So was I, Gamble. So was I. How are you doing, darling? How is your day going? Buffy is my all-time favorite TV show. I've seen it many times. I have all the seasons. It's a great show. I love it. Um, that and Charmed were my favorites. Uh, you read the comic of Buffy more than a TV show? Ah, the movie was fun as well. Yep. Did you know that there is a completely different ending, ending to this film? Mm -hmm. than the one that we got. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Charmed and Buffy. Hell yeah, Joy Toy. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am doing well. I hope you are marvelous. I am fucking fantabulous over here, Donnie. I am. Uh, we're celebrated. Uh, Go Klepto's birthday. And uh, saw his pies. So fucking delicious. Uh, and we're talking about the Lost Boys. Be long. Buffy is awesome. Uh, no, please say you have the different ending. I have info on the different ending. There is no actual video of the alternate ending, the original ending, though. Uh, the Buffy comics continued the Buffy TV show. Yep. Yep, that they did. Uh, so the original ending. So for those of you who have seen this, the original ending idea for the film was a post credit scene that saw the remaining vampires licking their wounds in the sunken hotel. The Lost Boys was meant to end on a shot of a mural from the early 1900s that featured Max looking exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Now, do you want to know why they were going to do that original ending? Because there was supposed to be a direct sequel 
Schumacher was supposed to make a direct sequel, The Lost Girls. Mm hmm. The Lost Girls. And while the way he wanted to create it did not happen. And so the ending of the original, the original ending was then taken out for the ending. So when you do see this film for the first time, you can take a look at the ending that we did receive and the ending that we could have received, which was, again, the film shows you in the sunken hotel where the vampires sleep, them licking their wounds. And as the camera pans out and moves, you're going to see a picture from the 1900s where Max looks the same. And that was going to lead into the second film. But we don't get to see that. Nope. Uh, because they intended to make a sequel, post credit scenes were hip in the 80s that they were tangled and they were supposed to. Uh, the Lost Girls were supposed to be the direct sequel to this film. Uh, but it did not happen. Yeah. You know, it's a shame it did not happen. I think it might have, it could have been a good time. Uh, belong uh, two of them, uh, original Xbox and PlayStation 2. Yes, and Serial is right. Uh, David, you've guys noticed how David's uh, part, now David, played by uh, Sutherland, you notice how small his part was. You probably didn't, but he had a very small dialogue because his presence was extraordinary in the film. Uh, Schumacher seen that Sutherland had an extraordinary presence about him in the film so that when he was doing it, realized and decided that Sutherland and David didn't need a huge dialogue. Hi, ball. Hi, you doing, Val vagina? How's your day going, my friend? Um, that could have been a cool movie if it was done right. Yep, it could have been a cool movie, seriously. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, my favorite. Oh, I've got way too many rubber. I've got t way too many. These are just a portion of my masks, but my favorite slasher is uh, Jason Voorhees. So I do have a lot of his masks. I have Creature from the Black Lagoon, you can't see here. Uh, Leatherface that you can't see here. I have a couple of zombie masks that you can't see here. I've got a whole bunch of masks. Uh, they're all my favorites, I would have to say. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. He had a huge presence as David in this film, so the dialogue was small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Reanimator! What did you think about Leonardo DiCaprio and Shutter Island? I actually liked Shutter Island. I don't like Leonardo DiCaprio because he's a douche, but I did like the film. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio says he's concerned about the environment, but flies around in a private fucking jet. Hmm. Yeah. Let's whine and cry and point fingers about the environment, but let's take our private fucking jet and fly everywhere. I think he's a super douche. Um, but again, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He is. He's Dutch? Oh, I, I mean douche, if I'm not saying it right. Like D-O-U-C-H-E. Douche. Uh, what's weird about the intended ending is the post credit scene of the tribe where Haim is a vampire. Mmm, tangled, right? Doesn't it, doesn't it give you more questions? I like Shutter Island. I like the film. I like the concept of the film. I like the way it went. Uh, I personally do not like Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, so, you guys remember the maggots? Uh, there is a scene where they're eating Chinese food and there is rice. Uh, yes, I do, Rubber. I do have one. I have one of Corey's. Yes, I do have one. Uh, the maggots needed a little persuasion. Uh, the scene was a little bit more complicated than simply just filling a container with bugs and moving in for a close-up. The maggots did not want to move. Remember, maggots eat decaying flesh and stuff like that, meats. And this was not really filled with meats. Uh, so the maggots were just like, eh, we're not moving too much. We don't really want to move because we're lazy motherfuckers right now. So, uh, the bug guy, they literally had a bug guy on set. He took lemon juice. Squeezed lemon juice on them. Yeah. 
that lemon juice woke them up and made them start moving so they could get the close up of the maggots. Yeah. The Conjuring is a great film, Nest. It's a great film. I love the universe. I love the Conjuring universe. But yeah, lemon juice makes maggots move. Yep. Yeah, right, Carnival? Right? Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool as well because I didn't know that. Uh, I know about maggots, but I didn't realize that lemon juice makes maggots move. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he squeezed some uh, lemon juice on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No worries, Kira. Have a great day, darling. Thank you so much for stopping by. Love your guts. Um, maggots scare the crap out of me because of the maggot storm scene in Lucio Fulci's. Ah, uh, yeah, Gates of Hell. <laughs> Fulci has great films. Great films. Um, thank you, Coyote. I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. How are you doing today? Um, thank you for that host. I appreciate you resurrecting the horde on your channel there, Coyote. Uh, but yeah, that sucks, Rubber. Did you guys ever hear of the blood-sucking cinema documentary that was done in 2007? If you haven't, now you have. Uh, I highly suggest checking out the documentary called Blood-Sucking Cinema. It was done in 2007. Corey Haim is interviewed on there. And Corey Haim said that all the blood had glitter in it, so it gave it the shimmering effect and was sim slimier than other fake blood. Schumacher wanted Schumacher and the um, the FX and SFX team wanted to create a different type of blood. They wanted it to look, you know, kind of infected. They didn't put a lot of glitter in it, but they did mix have a mixture of fake blood with glitter inside of it to give it that infected mystical look to it they wanted a shimmer to that blood they wanted it to stand out than other vampire blood that was out there uh and so they did it with glitter they made the regular fake blood and then they added glitter to it red glitter to be exact and a very fine glitter uh they didn't use the big glitter they used the fine glitter hello little antique doll how are you now, I told you guys that there was a planned sequel. There really was. Schumacher was trying to plan a sequel in the 90s, uh, a direct sequel, but it never got off the ground. And that was for the 90s. And then uh, what, Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out in 92. You're going to go read some school stuff for class. Don't worry. Have a great day, Canadian. You're going to do amazing. So don't worry about your stuff coming up. You're going to do awesome at it, okay? How you doing, little antique? Not the Colin Shitter. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Do you know that the contact lenses that they wore in the film were fucking painful? World, Hi, Hellbound. I'm glad you're loving it. I do this every Sunday. Every Sunday is Coffee Chat of Horrors. Hi, Joel. How are you? I bet his blood glitters, right? Mm-hmm. How's, how's your day going, Joel? Uh, the vampire contact lenses were nearly unbearable, according to the interviews with the vampires. Uh, the contacts were not made of nice and soft material. These contacts were made out of glass. Yeah, they were glass lenses. Uh, Dark Shadows rocks. Yes. Uh, nice, here. Fenris. Nice. Uh, surely the acid and the lemon hit the maggots. What will be like when you go into stinging nettles? Possibly ice. Possibly. I don't know how it interacted with the maggots, but it made them move. So, uh, same. Very similar, Regal, to this. Um, the the lenses in Fright Night from 1985 were made with plastic, so they could be filed down. Um, Lost Boys, they created glass contacts. Uh, so the uh, reasons like Twilight wasn't the first, but see, Twilight was the first because they're the only glittering fucking vampires where Lost Boys did not fucking glitter. They did not sparkle. Um, we are being raided, so we're going to time out again, guys. We're going to time out again. Foss41, Welcome. Thank you so very much for bringing you and your community over to the Horde. Can we get some explanation point raid hype up in this bitch, please? I love this channel with everything and every detail. Why didn't I find you earlier? 
We are meant to meet who we are to meet when the time is right there, Rubber. I'm so glad you're enjoying it here. It's essentially acidic agent. Yes, probably you are most likely super fucking correct there, Gamer Sans yeah, Dragon Spawn. Ah, thank you for that vote. For rubber hands, or welcome to the crypt, and thank you for that follow. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Welcome. Faust, thank you for bringing some fresh brains over to us. We are a little hungry. We are a little hungry. We're getting a little peckish over here. And I could use another refill of brain juice. So thank you for bringing you and your community over here. Um, how was your stream, Faust? What did you do today? Thank you, Horde, for that sub hype. I greatly, I mean, that raid hype. I greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I had to call you out on that Twilight stuff. I can't stand fucking Twilight. I'm sorry. Re I don't care if I have Twilight fucking fans up in this bit. I fucking hate that film. Stupid. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This here is from the the, the the Temple of the Satanic Order. This is from them. This is Baphomet. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous fucking mug. I love it. It's by far one of my favorites. Thank you for that shout out for Faust. Um, ah, bleh. vampires don't fucking sparkle. But whatever. It's a teeny film, teeny film. Anyways, anyways, um, the vampire contacts were made out of glass. Unlike the vampire contacts that were in Fright Night from 1985, they were made out of hard plastic. And that hard plastic was filed down to fit in their eyes correctly. Yeah, can you imagine having plastic in your friggin' eyes? Or even glass in your eyes? I like that Meyer went outside the box with Twilight, but I do think it's a silly take on vampires. Dragon Spun, it is a very silly take on vampires, but I can't handle it. I don't like it at all. Uh, I agree, Donnie. Uh, the movie and book can die in a fire. Joy Toy, preach it. Uh, on the plus side, I learned who Kellen Lex was. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Twilight is a good game if you judge it as a comedy. I got you, Rubber. I, you mean movie. It's all good, dude. It's all good. I speak English and half the words that come out of my fucking mouth are wrong. So don't worry about it. You're all good. Now, the reason why these contacts for Lost Boys were so unbearable is because the glass lenses did not allow for oxygen to flow to the eyeball. So it made it for very uncomfortable shots. And there is uh, one upside to it. Uh, Hellblade, awesome, Faust. That's awesome. Hellblade's a great game. Glass contacts sound like a scary proposition. It, 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 yeah, it, it is hellbound. Uh, they don't allow oxygen to go in, right? So it covers the oxygen. It stops the oxygen from getting into the eyeballs. Uh, must have been why there's a limited scenes. Exactly, Carnival. I was going to get into that. That is, you need to watch The Lost Boys. Oh, my God. You need to see it, uh, Chronic. I think you will love it. It's a great film. And I think if you are somebody who doesn't like horror, I think you would enjoy this film. Even if you love horror, I think you will enjoy this film. It is a great film. Definitely is. Uh, you are funny, Riggs. Uh, Ashley Greens is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The only Twilight movie I saw uh, was the underrated one with Reese Witherspoon. I have no idea uh, what that one is. Contra, thank you for re-sacrificing your soul to the Horde for five months. <laughs> How are you doing, darling? Ah, thank you, Contra. Thank you so very much. It was a spoof on the Twilight. I probably didn't see it then. Anything to deal with Twilight, I probably have not seen. Mm -hmm. Definitely is serious. Uh, I was. I recommend watching Vampire Sucks. It's a parody. Hmm. I do like um, uh, ne Leslie Nielsen's vampire film, uh, Dead and Loving It, and Repossessed. That one's. I love those ones. But anyways, let let me get back to my glass contacts here. Um, now there was an there was an upside to the glass contacts and the uncomfortable scenes. Uh, during the scene, if you guys remember, David Han, De David Hand catches fire, right? And he sheds a single tear during the close-up on his face. That single tear 
was Kiefer Sutherland's Rhiannon body here. trying to deal with how dry his eyes were, but it made for a great shot. Believe it or not. Thank you for the slap, Regal. I love it. Mmm. What's wrong with it? I can't. You guys can move it around. It's, it, it's a caption that you guys can move. Um, is there something wrong with it? It says that they're on. It says that they're on. I can turn them on and off. Um, the captions. Yeah, that's fucked up about the tear, right? Refresh, maybe? I love Vampire in Brooklyn. Love it. Eddie Murphy did a great job. Uh, they are not... They are not movie route? What the hell are you talking about, Riggs? They're not moving. They're moving for me. Okay, so let's turn them off. And then turn them back on. They're moving for me, so I have no idea on Twitch's end because I can't see what you guys see. I, I have no idea, Ice. No idea. I don't know. Psh, that's Twilight. That's not considered horror or anything in my book. But yeah, crazy about his tear, right? Because uh, that up close, it looked like that tear was actually meant to be there, but it wasn't. It's Kiefer Sutherland's body trying to moisturize his own eyes. It wasn't picking up my voice. Thank you, Dragon's Lair. Thank you for letting me know. I, it was moving for me. I fucking love what we do in the shadows. I cannot wait for that next season, Dahi. I cannot wait for the next season. I love both the film and the television show. Oh, that, oh, I bet you did, Contra, but GG's on you for taking care of them for so long. Uh, Eddie Murphy, or he mostly, I love Eddie Murphy. Uh, I love the old Eddie Murphy before he got into movies. He was an awesome comedian. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite vampire uh, television shows and one of my favorite vampire movies. Fucking love it. Um, David, David's real fate. Now, uh, we all know David, Kiefer Sutherland, for those of you who didn't see it. Uh, when the vampires meet their end, a stake through the heart, we see them start to disintegrate, right? Marco has an especially gross demise, spraying some pretty gnarly looking goo from his body, if you remember that from his chest to be exact, right? While falling from his uh, perch. Uh, Max doesn't have it any easy either. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Max also doesn't have it any easier. He gets himself staked after grandpa crashes through the house while David, uh, was, uh, David has a very unpleasant experience. If you remember David's death scene, mm -hmm. he was jabbed in by deer antlers in, uh, the house. So his fate was very different than the other vampires in the film. Uh, as well, uh, a wooden stake is key to slaying a vampire. David, while impaled, was not done. So with the necessary equipment and therefore survived his attack, David was meant to make a comeback in the written second sequel, but it was never filmed, and the sequel was Lost Girls. Asian, how are you? How is your day? It's one of my favorite vampire films, yeah. So the reason why David was alive is because it has to be a stake that's wooden through the heart, right? Not just any stake. It has to be a wooden stake according to this vampire lore for the Lost Boys. So the reason why David's fate was unlike the rest because the antlers were made out of bone, right? They're not made out of wood on that deer. Devil. See, my overlay is not working here. Devils should have had a, an image pop up. Did it pop up? Devil dog. Ah, thank you for that host, my friend. There was no direct sequel. It never came out. Joel, Schum Joel Schumacher wanted to create a sequel in the 90s, a direct sequel to this film. It never made air. It never happened. They did, Asian. It actually kind of like filtered down that they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they created Lost Boys, Re they had the ending open 
to make that sequel match, direct sequel. When I say direct sequel, there are sequels to this movie, but not direct sequels. The direct sequel is never made. I love the underworld. I like Kate Beckinsale. I like her as an actress. She's gorgeous too. I mean, shit. Uh, she ain't bad to look at. Um, but that is why David is still alive when it comes to this film, is he was impaled on uh, antlers over a wooden stake. Mm-hmm. Oh, she definitely is. You finally got the captions working? Uh, I restarted them because, I don't know, I'm going to be switching captions, by the way. I will be switching cap captions. I just haven't had time to do it. Uh, sequels were taboo back then. Studios saw too many sequel flops. Oh, they really did. Uh, they did, Asian. They really did. Um, but for some reason, uh, Joel could not get this to get up off the ground. You got an uh, refresh, Ice. Refresh. Thank you, Joel, for giving us a blessing. Uh, your smile is beautiful. Mm, that's so nice of you. How was work, Devil? How was your day at work going? I'm going to give you guys the secret to behind the flying. Uh, let me get another image here. There we go. I'm going to give you the secret behind the flying vampire shots. Now, I do have a little bit more of uh, stuff. So mods, we might go over. We might go over noon if that's Free okay with you. We got ripped off in Underworld when she was in the car having sex. I know. I know, Serial. Damn her husband for that, right? I am glad it was easy, devil. Uh, they call it horror. I didn't. It was Teen Wolf. I love Teen Wolf. I love Teen Wolf the cartoon. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, God. It made fucking millions. 53 is what I said earlier. Worldwide. Mm hmm. So you guys remember the point of view shot of the vampires uh, in flight? They're trademarked to the Lost Boys. Trademarked to the Lost Boys. Uh, uh, C's recommended channel, C's play on reanimator. Yeah, definitely. Do you know that I just backed the, uh, Kickstarter of the reanimator comic books? Yeah, I did. Uh, I am a Reani my I'm a huge fan of the series reanimator. Hence my name reanimate her. Uh, Jeffrey Coombs is a fucking God when it comes to him playing Dr. Herbert West. It's, I'm a very big fan. Um, I have. I know I'm fo focused. I'm sorry, Riggs. I'm sorry. How you doing, the van damage? How's your day going? Anyways, the point of view of the uh, the flying vampires is trademarked by the Lost Boys. Uh, lo yeah, it's trademarked by them. Whether they're terrorizing a young couple in their car or simply simply en route to meet up with another, the aerial shots serve as a very unique aesthetic choice for the film. Um, right, right? The Van Damage. Welcome to the crypt. Thank you for that follow. Uh, this camera technique was used for much more practical reasons as well. Although The Lost Boys isn't exactly low budget, the story that production team were trying to tell involved some ideas that were rather expensive to put into action. While there were several scenes in which the vampires are seen on camera flying around... Schumacher and company seem to have taken a page from the Jaws book. Yes. Allowing for the audience to use their imagination to fill in what is left off screen. Toby Hooper did the same thing in Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the early 70s. Um, King Dread, how are you doing, my darling? How is your day going? Uh, let me just scroll up here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Random fact, I got a video from Tim Capello for my birthday. That's awesome. Tim Capello. He is the saxonist in the saxophonist. I keep calling him the saxonist. The saxophonist in this film. How you doing, King? How is your day going? I just lost my fucking chat again. Why am I losing chat here on Twitch? I am the llama mama from hell. And how are we doing today? Ah, uh, yes, Van Damme, we do. Hex and Craft is awesome fucking music. I am the Llama Mama from Hell. For those of you that have not met me, I have been summoned by Batman Goddess. Mm-hmm. I am Reanimator's alter ego. <laughs> we come in, uh... You usually eat the souls of bad children. Hex and Craft is great. Great. Me and him are doing some music together. He is such a... Oh, definitely is Van Damage. That's awesome. 
GG's on that. No worries, Asian Bruce. You do what you have to do, hon. All hail the llama mama. So uh, we've seen, we have seen this type of technique throughout horror movies, especially Toby Hooper, who did this um, for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where he allowed your imagination to create the most gory, horrific scenes in that film. Uh, there is actually no real gorific scene in Texas. So, and that was done for a reason, which started that off in 1968, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. That is where that first, where you first see that take place in a horror film. George Romero wanted to keep the violent and wanted your visual imagination to create the violence and gore in the film. So when the mother is downstairs and the daughter comes with the spade in uh, Night of the Living Dead, you technically don't see the gore on that part of the film. And that is because he didn't want you to. Toby was then influenced by that in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which helped influence numerous other movies down the road, including The Lost Boys. I am well, Ra. I wanted to stop by while I had a little time to come in and say hi to everybody. Coffee Tata Horrors is going fucking amazingly. I'm having a great time discussing The Lost Boys and bringing in some of my other knowledge of horror films to you guys. Also, not a zombie movie, according to Romero. No, they never say the word zombie in the film at all. They are considered ghouls. And uh, Van Damage, it's one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. I know a fuck ton about Night of the Living Dead. Um, but here we go back with uh, The Lost Boys. Now, according to the writers of this film, the character named Lucy was chosen to reflect Lucy Westerna from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Did you guys know that? Mm hmm. At least a movie like Zombies and Not Fast. Exactly, Fenris. Also, the zombies or ghouls, as you would want to call them in Night of the Living Dead, never just ate brains. You do realize they ate everything on the body. They never were just into brains. Like later on, in the, as zombies evolved, they went for the brains. And the original zombie movie is White Zombie with Bela Lugosi. That is the very first zombie movie of all time. Romero created the zombie that we have now, especially for 1968. Ghouls ate flesh, exactly. Mm -hmm. We do eat everything. We don't waste it. We don't waste it. We came a little distracted from the stream, the news report. Oh, gosh. I hope everyone's okay over there in Sweden. Oh, we're hit by a car. I hope they're okay. I do hope they're okay. That sucks. So throughout this film, if you've never seen it, you're going to see it. But uh, throughout this film, you see horror homage uh, to different, different movies throughout the industry. You do see uh, 16 Candles, right? You do see uh, Once Bitten and a few other uh, posters and things throughout the film. Do you guys remember David wearing gloves? Anyone wonder why Kiefer Sutherland wore gloves as a vampire? Okay, do you want to know why? Sutherland broke his wrist. He was horsing around on his motorcycle and broke his wrist. So he had to keep the gloves on to cover his cast. He had a cast, and if you look closely, you can try to see it. But during the filming of this film, he had a broken wrist. So he kept the gloves on to cover up the cast. Yeah. Do you know that this film was supposed to be PG-13 style of a film? Richard Donner's original screenplay, again, was supposed to be from and inspired by Peter Pan, Lost Boys, right? But Joel Schumacher said, uh-uh, uh-uh, people aren't going to like this. It's going to be the Goonies of vampires. And, well, we love Goonies, but we don't want them to be the vampires so he created a different version of this film and made the vampires older. Yep. Yep. Now, um, we do see Star in here. And everyone is wondering, is Star a vampire or is she a human? What the fuck is she? Because we never see her in vampire form. And she is a half vampire. She technically isn't a full vampire. She is a half vampire. 
and we never see her go into her vampire form. Uh, broken wrist, cast cover up. Yep, that's exactly what it was for. Hmm? And like I said earlier, Joel Schumacher had numerous, numerous bands sign up um, for the soundtrack, and he did that without having to pay them buttloads of money. He did say that he would direct all, not all every single music video, but each band that signed up, he said he would create and direct their video, music video. I agree, Van Damage. And Star, she can definitely buy me anytime as well, Fenris. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Now, uh, do you guys know that the opening scene could have spoiled the entire film? Do you guys know what scene, what opening scene could have ruined the whole movie in The Lost Boys? Nope. You guys remember the Ferris, uh, the, 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 the Ferris, not the Ferris wheel, but the, the merry-go-round. You guys remember that scene? And uh, the order that the vampires first appear on screen in the same order uh, that they meet their maker only in reverse. Yep. David, Dwayne, Paul, and Marco. A further bit of foreshadowing comes from Corey, Corey Feldman, Edgar's, Edgar Frog, uh, also says no two vamps go the same way. Some yell and scream, some go quietly, some explode, some implode. Also, the, the merry-go-round where you see them, right? They show up in the same order that they die in. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of funny. Was it done on purpose? Nobody knows. I tried to find that out. That was one of the things I tried to find out if it was done on purpose. Like if um, uh, Edgar Frog saying no two vamps go the same way, some yell and scream, some go quietly, some explode, some implode, which is exactly what happened to each of these vampires in this film. I couldn't find any answers on concrete saying that that was on purpose or on accident. Uh, same thing with the order that they died in, that they showed up in on the uh, merry-go-round. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to find answers on it, but I, I couldn't. So I thought that was kind of cool. It would have been nice to know if it just happened that way or was it like, coincidental? I don't know. Uh, another thing, uh, did you guys know that Joe Ferreira owned the comic book shop that was in the movie? Uh, when you see the comic book shop, you see two men can be seen playing the pinball for, uh, the second time Sam visits the comic book shop. Mm hmm. Uh, the guy with the facial hair is Joe Ferreira, Joe Ferreira too. And you didn't notice that? Yeah, Carnival, if you watch the film again, take a look at the two different scenes that you see. Yeah. Hi, Sasha. How are you? Yeah. So uh, you can see two guys playing pinball when Sam goes back to the comic book shop. The guy, um, mm -hmm. the guy with the facial hair is uh, Joe Ferreira, uh, who actually owned the comic book shop, Atlantis Fantasy World. The comic book shop has now moved its location, but it is still owned by Joe. Yeah, it's still owned by him. Welcome mm. to my world. Same, Kate. Sasha. Same. It's such a great film. Um, do you guys know that uh, Sam, uh, Sam's dog, Nanook, is an Alaskan mama, Malamute? Oh, my God. Can't even say Malamute. Uh, which are known for their peaks at the top of their head, uh, which resembles Bella Lugosi's classic Dracula hairstyle. And one of the reasons... That type of dog was picked for the film. So when you're watching Lost Boys again, take a look at the dog. Malamute. Take a look at the dog. Notice the dog has a peak. And we would call that a widow's peak. And that widow's peak is actually what a vampire, classic vampire look from Bella Lugosi's Dracula. Hmm. Malamute. 
The, the dog was picked for a reason. The dog was picked for a reason. So I thought that was a little bit of information that I did not know. I didn't know that the dog was specifically picked because of the peak of their head, of their hair. Yeah, vampire dog. Um, do you guys know that there are how many tropes, vampire tropes in this film? Does anybody know what a trope is? Nanook. Yes, Nanook. Uh, so the vampire tropes, no or diminished reflection, garlic, being invited into one's home, Lucy, the wife of Dracula, and holy water. Those were the very few tropes that were in this film. Those are your vampire tropes. Uh, you guys want to see the deleted scenes? We have our 12 deleted scenes for you guys. Let's see, what time is it? It's 11.43. Riggs, are you good with um, staying a little after 12? Not by much, but a little after 12? 